Hello and welcome to the Persian Kitchen YouTube channel. My name is Shadi and today I'm going to be showing you how to make Zeytun Parvade, which essentially is Persian marinated olives. It's so simple, so delicious and so underrated. I don't know why more Iranians don't order this when they go to restaurants or some don't even know about it. So I'm really excited to be sharing this with you guys and hope that you give it a go. Fun fact, it's suitable for vegans and it's gluten free. So you should definitely share this with your friends and get them hooked on Zeytun Parvade. But anyway, let's get going and it really is simple. You need one big bowl to mix everything in and just a small selection of ingredients. So in this bowl, I've got 400 grams of just regular like olives that you'd buy from the supermarket in like the glass jar. I've drained them and I've weighed them out. And these can be like the super basic ones. This is a great recipe to jazz up olives. Put them straight into your bowl. To that, I'm gonna add a small handful of freshly picked mint leaves and equally the same amount of freshly picked coriander leaves. You'll also need three cloves of garlic, and I recommend actually checking where you buy your uh, garlic from. You should always go for like a Spanish garlic and try to avoid a Chinese one if possible, because there's quite a lot of research online saying that they bleach them, etc. So try it and get Spanish if you can. I've got the pomegranate arrows, and fun fact, they actually are called arrows, not called seeds, of one smallish pomegranate, Tell a lie, I did actually buy this from Sainsbury's and this is 80 grams, like pre-picked, but that's about one small pomegranate. And for your like seasoning, you'll need half a teaspoon each of salt and angelica powder. This is quite hard to find, I'm not gonna lie. I bought mine in Iran, it's called Golpar for any Iranians tuned in. But yeah, just Google like angelica powder and you can find it somewhere. This is 250 grams of walnuts and I'm gonna blend them momentarily in a food processor. You'll need about a third of a cup of extra virgin olive oil, equally a third of a cup of pomegranate molasses. And it's really important that you find a good quality one. Definitely check the back, ensure that it's not just full of water, sugar and E numbers. And you'll need about half a cup of pomegranate juice, preferably freshly squeezed, but I didn't have enough time to, you know, do that. So I'm just gonna cheat and use some good quality pom juice. Okay, so let's get going. And it's so simple, you can do it in any order you like. We're basically just gonna chuck everything into the bowl, mix it together. But first, obviously, make sure everything's ready to go in. So I'm gonna just grind my walnuts to the consistency of perhaps the same as the pomegranate arrow. So a bit grainy, but small. So this looks perfect to me. There's the nice chunky bits that will give a lot of texture and then equally the small finer bits that will add a lot of uh, flavor and release a lot more oils. So go ahead and chuck that into your bowl. Then we can add in the ground angelica and salt. Add in our garlic cloves. Sometimes when I'm being really lazy, I actually just do it with the skin, but seeing as we're filming, I'll do it properly. I won't cut no corners. I recommend using three, but if you like garlic and you want to pack a punch, you can add more. But just remember that we're not cooking this, so that, that garlic, you know, the strength will really reside. It's actually really hard to do this. So you don't actually have to bother peeling the garlic skin if you can't be bothered. There's always a cheeky corner that can be cut. And as long as you just, you know, hold on to it, you'll be fine. We want to chuck in the pomegranate. It's advised that you chop these, but one little kitchen hack that I like is to actually just slice my herbs instead of chopping them with a knife. I feel like I can never get them fine enough, but with scissors it's so much easier. And the same with the mint. Just try and get it as tight as you can, and then you just snip away. Mm, it smells so good. I've been growing this mint actually in my garden. And again, it was one of them little pot things that you buy in the supermarket. I bought it in Waitrose and it was a really, really good looking one. Moroccan mint, I was like, oh, I'm gonna love this. My brother-in-law is Moroccan as well. So I grew two and I gave one to him and my sister. Makes a great addition to fresh salads, hot water if you want a good mint tea. 
Okay, so that's all of our dry ingredients in the bowl. I'm now going to go ahead and put in the wet ingredients. The thing with the processed olives is that most of the time you lose the really, really rich olive taste, which you get when you buy a fresh olive. So we're gonna put in extra virgin olive oil. That's a third of a cup. Equally one third of a cup of the good quality pomegranate molasses. And next up is gonna be half of a cup of good quality pomegranate juice. Okay, so basically you're done. All you have to do now is get stuck in. You can either use spoons or if you just wanna be extra, you can use your hands, let everything come together. We want it to be marinated olives so that the flavors can really come together and marinate. Just put this in the fridge for three days, wait patiently, and you will have delicious marinated olives. It will be a lot thicker and it will be super delicious and I'm confident that you're gonna absolutely love it. So let's just pretend three days have gone by. You'll take it out of the fridge and you'll spoon out your beautifully coated olives. And for me, I just think that anything coated in pomegranate molasses and pomegranate seeds is quintessentially Persian, which sometimes I have a bit of a gripe with, as I don't think we should just, you know, add a pomegranate and let it be Iranian, but it, it just works. <laughs> sometimes you have to roll with the punches. Yeah, that's it. Please give the video a good thumbs up if you've liked it. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to give it a go. And don't forget you can also follow me on Instagram. You can tag me in your post so I can see your creations of equally delicious food. And definitely subscribe to stay tuned for more lovely, authentic, homemade Persian recipes coming your way very soon. Thanks for watching.